Hello everybody, my name is uh, Jørgen Larsen <clears throat> and I will in this video show how to use uh, Chipscope in combination with uh, Silence Platform Studio. Chipscope is this package that is that is very useful when you want to do on-chip debugging and naturally <clears throat> that is one of the things you would also like to do when you have a microblaze processor running on your um, FPGA. So in this uh, this setup, we have I have a, a pre-built project. I have a microblade single core uh, processor running on a Spartan 6, and the entire project has been synthesized and it's working. I have um, <coughs> an executable L file as part of the bit file, which is downloaded to the FPGA so that the, um, the microblade processor will start uh, running this application as soon as the FPGA has been programmed. Um, what I would like to do now is to <laughs> insert a microblaze uh, rubbish, insert um, <clears throat> a chip scope a debugger component into the system and interface it with my uh, LEDs on my development board uh, so that I've also from Chipscope can see um, that the LEDs go, go high and low. So what we do is we go to our debug menu here and insert debug, well, use the debug, debug configuration. Um, in here you have over here our system menu and you select the top one monitor hardware signals and you click add Chipscope peripheral. So here you have three options. You can either connect to the X, uh, AXI bus to monitor signals directly on the bus. You can do <coughs> arbitrary system level signal monitoring using the ILA core, or you could go to a virtual input output with the VIO core. Um, these are the three options that are available to you. So for now, I would like to just monitor arbitrary system signals so I press OK, and I'm presented this menu where I have to select the ports that I want to uh, to monitor. So I go here and I select my uh, my LEDs, uh, these ports, LED ports, and I select my general purpose IO underscore O and add it <coughs> to the signals that I want to monitor. And that's basically it. So you press OK, and uh, Silence then inserts these two chip scope icon uh, module, which is the base module for everything that goes on in chip scope. And you have this chip scope uh, ILA, uh, which is our monitoring <coughs> component. If we look at the ports menu here, we can see how it's connected. Um, so if we take Chipscope icon and the Chipscope ILA core and unfold them, we can see that the control port of the icon module uh, is connected to the ALI core. This is done automatically by Silent, since you would all, you always need this icon module. This is a control module of, of Chipscope. Um, it connects to this Chipscope ILA core on the on the control port one, and you can see here that the ILA control. Uh, bus is then also connected to the Chipscope icon module. Um, the RLA core also have a clock input, it has some data pins, and it has some trigger inputs. Uh, you now might be wondering, how can I monitor anything if I don't have anything on the data inputs? And and we see this if we go here and right click and configure, it, uh, configure IP. Um, <coughs> we can see here that in the the menu here for, for 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 settings of the of the ILA core, you can see you have the option to say use the ILA trigger signals as the ILA data signals. So in this sense, uh, we only need to connect the trigger signals. We don't need to connect any data signals. Of course, if I deselect this one and then set a size of the bus, I can connect directly to the data signals. And this is of course useful if you want to trigger on some other signals and measure 
um, well, you have two pools of signals. You have some data you want to measure dependent on some other signals. So in that in that case, you would like to have separated trigger and data signals, for instance. But in this case, uh, it's fine by me to trigger on on my data signal, so I can use the setting, and it automatically sets the size of the data bus uh, to fit my trigger signals. So that's more or less it. So now what we what we want to do now is we want to have uh, our bit file updated. Um, it will take some time. So if I press here, it will start updating my bit file. Um, and I will pause the video so that uh, you don't have to wait through. I'll be back when whenever it's done. So now signings have finished uh, synthesizing uh, <coughs> the design, including the, the chip scope packages. So what we do now is we uh, download the bitstream to the FPDA. By pressing here, it should only take a second or four. And it's up and running. And then we want to power up ChipScope. Um, it's called Analyzer. You, you normally find it under all program signings tools, uh, design suite, and uh, ChipScope Pro, 64 bit in my case, and then Analyzer. So now it started, so we want to initialize the JTAG chain. Uh, and it finds my device, so I'm just saying OK. So what you see here is we have our data ports, which are also our trigger ports. So if we uh, you know, if we change the size a little bit here, you can see that I have uh, six trigger ports up here as well. Um, and if I if I run, um, so I make a a request to the status of all my my ports, we can see that that port number three, so say bit four, it's high. So I can take my dip switch, turn it low, and then I can run again. And we can see that it's low. So what I haven't said until now is that I'm using a Spartan 6 development board with, um, among other things, it has four dip switches and uh, seven um, LEDs. So I'm using the four dip switches to control the first four LEDs in this array of seven LEDs. So zero, one, two, and three I use. So if I take all four dip switches, put them high, and press play, I can see that port 1, 2, 3, and 4 becomes high. And then if I put the two center, so saying bit 1, bit 2, put them low, and then again do a request, I can see that they're low. Another way of using is using this is to set up a, a bit pattern for my trigger. Um, and we can do that. So what, what we normally would do is, so I'm just shrinking this so we can see everything. So what we would do is we have these ports and 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 now the triggering is in a don't care situation. So it just triggers whenever you press play. But if you want it to be waiting for a specific pattern of, um, of bits to occur, you can set the, the, the bit uh, pattern up here. So say that I want this port to be one. 0, 0, 1. So this means that my uh, dip switches should be in in one zero zero configuration and, and until that happens my uh, <clears throat> my trigger won't trigger. So if I pray, press play here you can say that it says waiting for trigger uh, and I can then, you have to trust me on this, play around with my dip switches down here without anything happening so now I have all four dip switches set to high, and it didn't trigger because it doesn't uh, meet the requirement of being one zero zero one. So, but if I if I select, like if I take the 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 bit number number two and three, if I put those two low, so now one of them is low, and now the second becomes low, you can see that it's triggerless um, and returns the 
the the data values of these ports. So naturally, this is not highly interesting because I know the values of all these ports, but this triggering can of course be used to say trigger on one specific signal and then what what are the status of other signals. Um, a way of using this is to set for instance these two for as a don't care. So if I do this, the, 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 the trigger will trigger as soon as uh, bit 4 and bit 1 becomes high and then um, um, don't care about these two but of course we'll report them back so if I press press play and then set uh, dip switch uh, or one high and three high and four high we can see that it triggers now when I put the number four high uh, so here so one zero oh it says one I didn't know that and then one so here we can see that this is not part of my my uh, trigger setup. So I I'm, I'm don't care what these are. I'm just triggering on this being one and this being one, and then I can see what the rest is. So this way might make more sense to to use it. So um, well, thank you for now. This was a demo on how to to use the chip scope to analyze um, pins in an XPS project. And I don't want to see. So thank you for listening.